Welcome back to P2. Today we're looking at stationary points. So a stationary point is a point on the curve where the gradient is zero. Now, at these points we could have a maximum point, a minimum point, or a point of inflection. So a maximum point is going to be something like this, where that would be your kind of zero gradient. Minimum point would be down the bottom. And a point of inflection is something like this, where we reach zero, but then we continue going up. And equally, it can happen the other way around. Now, a couple of things to think about either side of this. You know, if I'm looking at my maximum here, I've got a positive gradient this side of my maximum and then a negative gradient afterwards. Whereas my minimum, it's the other way around. Negative gradient followed by a positive gradient. With the point of inflection, I get a positive gradient followed by a positive gradient, or I can have a negative gradient followed by a negative gradient, you know, which would be something like this, negative and negative. So this is what we're kind of looking at, so maximum, minimum, and then point of inflection. So I find it hard sometimes to concentrate on speaking and writing at the same time when I'm trying to spell words. Now, often you might see the word local in there with your maximum or minimum point. What this is really referring to is if we've got a a graph maybe like a type of x cubed type of graph we would have two points within here which have a zero gradient at them this would be a maximum point this would be a minimum point but to call this the maximum point would be wrong because it's clearly not the maximum value we've got values above it over here so therefore what we do is this is called a local maximum Point, and this one would be a local minimum point okay and that's how we describe them so the word local will mean that it is this turning point but it's not the maximum potential value that you've got from your graph or a minimum okay it's just the largest one within that kind of vicinity if you think of it that way now we were talking about gradients and that is essentially how we're going to go about finding these initially. You know, find my gradient, make it equal to zero. That will give me my stationary point. And then I can look either side of that to see whether it's a maximum, a minimum or a point of inflection. So first example here, find the coordinates of any stationary points on this curve and state whether they're local minimum maximum or point of inflection so let's first write down the equation of our line now we need to differentiate so that we can find the gradient so 3x squared minus 4x minus 4 now stationary points are going to be when dy by dx equals 0 so let dy by dx equal 0, and we get 3x squared minus 4x minus 4 equals 0. Now at this point you want to use the quadratic formula or factorise. Um, this one I do believe does factorise. Uh, 2 and a 2 minus an 8 plus. Just a quick check, 3x squared minus 6x plus 2 it's four up minus four x and then minus four. So we've got here our x equals minus two thirds and x equals two. So we have two stationary points. So 
let's just do a little table. So we want to think about our x values. Okay, um, we'll do this for both of them kind of separately here. So let's try the minus two thirds first. And what I kind of want to do is I want to look just either side of that minus two thirds and pretty close to it. So minus two thirds is 0 0.6 recurring, I'll say negative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go at minus 0 0.6 and minus 0 0.7. Um, in fact, what I want to do is put those in the other way around, as that would be the order in which we would see them on a graph. You know, minus 7, 0 0.7 is further to the left. So what I'll do is I'll put that minus 0 0.7 into my dy by dx. And looking at the gradient here, we're going to have a positive gradient. Okay, so it's going to be 0 0.27, which is obviously positive. And thinking about the shape, that's going to give me a positive line. Now, this one's obviously 0, because that is the stationary point. Now, we just want to check the minus 0 0.6, and that gives me minus 0 0.52, which is negative, or that shape there. Now, if I look at what shape this is creating, this is creating a maximum or a local maximum. So when x equals this minus two thirds, we have a local maximum. Now, I can actually also substitute that into y and get the actual full coordinates. And I just pop that on there for you. Now I want to do the same kind of thing now just with my other one. So we know this one's x equals 2, so let's just go either side of that. So we'll go 2.1 and 1.9. And again we want to look at the gradient and the shape. So the first one gives me minus 0 0.77, which is obviously negative. So that has a shape pointing down. This one is zero, it's obviously then horizontal. And then we get 0 0.83, which is positive. And then we've got it going up as a positive gradient. So you can see now the shape is a local minimum. So at this time, I'll just put down the full coordinates. So it's 2, 0. Uh, we have a local minimum. And this is the kind of way in which you look at whether it's going to be a maximum, a minimum. And again, if it was a... A point of inflection, you'd have, say, a positive, a zero, a horizontal one, and then another positive, or a negative, horizontal, and negative. Okay? But obviously, doing it this kind of way, while it makes it nice and clear and visual and easy to see, it's also quite time-consuming. Okay? Luckily, there is another way. And the other way is called the second derivative or that's what we're going to be using so that means that you're going to differentiate for a second time or d2y by dx squared okay and this will tell us the nature of the stationary point okay so imagine that uh, we're looking at when x is some value if I take my second differential and it is greater than zero, then we have a local minimum. And you probably guessed it, if it's less than zero, we have a local maximum. Now, when we have it equal to zero, that is when we have a little bit of an issue. 
okay because this could be a local minimum a local maximum or a point of inflection so if you do get your second derivative equal to zero then you have to use the first method the longer way and check what's happening either side of the point okay it's the only way to do it but if we do have it greater than zero or less than zero then that saves us a lot of work so let's take the same question or same examples we did earlier i'm going to write down the equation again so we're going to differentiate and then of course normally then we'd go on divide by dx equals zero solve and so on but we already know that this is minus two thirds and x equals two now let's take the second differential huh, just realized made a silly mistake very sorry about that i didn't even differentiate it did i so let's write down this first differential again that's better so easy to make silly mistakes you see you've got to concentrate so much now back to where we were so let us differentiate this for a second time so now we get 6x minus 4 and what we want to do is we want to substitute each of our values in to find out what's happening so when x equals minus 2 thirds d2y by dx squared equals 6 times minus 2 thirds minus 4. And that's going to give me minus 4 minus 4, which is minus 8. So we can see here that this is less than 0. So therefore it's a maximum or a local maximum. And at or when x equals 2, now we know what to expect here as we've obviously already done this previously but here we've got it now 12 minus 4 is 8 so d2y by dx squared is greater than 0 therefore local minimum okay so this method of the using the second differential to tell you the nature of the point is really really useful okay just remember though you do need to know the first method because if this equals zero you have to take the longer way to finding what's happening at the stationary points